Cool. So to start today's community call, I thought it would be uh, good because we're about two weeks into the power program or power user program now. So I think it would make sense to kind of like take a step back, um, have everyone share their thoughts of how the power user program is going so far. And then once we kind of take stock of whether we think it's good or bad, um, solicit feedback on ways we could potentially improve it if we even want to. So, so I guess to get started, um, I can go first. I think it's kind of amazing how every time, like normally the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I go to research help with the live feed and there's like a lot more activity, at least from my like, um, I guess, subjective perspective. Another thing I can show here is our metrics. So looking at our um, amplitude, let me pull this up one second. To your left. <laughs> oh no. Welcome back. You're muted. You're still muted. Sorry about that. I uh, used the wrong tab to hop into the metrics. <laughs> So this is what we've got so far. Here's the beginning of the power user program, um, 14 users. The first week we ended up with 18. Last week we had 14 again. So um, just from two weeks, similar like average user numbers. But look at the discussions here. I think this is the beginning, 26, 57. And then we've had 22 so far, just over like about 24 hours, maybe 36 hours of the first week. So discussions are way up. Um, Signups kind of holding on steady, up a little bit, a little bit of bump, I'd say. Um, upvotes up tremendously. Um, papers uploaded. This is the Power User Program here, so pretty consistent. And then, yeah, so I'd say uh, while it's not like a ton more active contributors, um, there's definitely like a drastic increase in the content. So, yeah, just curious what everybody else thinks so far. Well, Nicholas here is a, is a member. So, Nicholas, what has been your experience so far? Uh, it's it's been good. Uh, I I feel like we have more of an incentive to to go in and, and discuss papers uh, and post them as well. So, I think it's uh, it's going good so far. Um, yeah. What, one thing I have a question for you, Nicholas, is like, how much of a, like, I don't know, I guess like, hey, does it feel like a chore versus like, hey, I feel good about doing it? Like, what's the like balance there? Do you feel? Uh, I, I don't think it, personally, it doesn't feel like a chore. It feels like I go in whenever I have free time and, uh, it, depending on how much time I have, I either post something and and discuss, or if I have less time, I go in and support. It doesn't feel like a chore to me. I think that's a good mindset to have, and this is what we need to strive for to cultivate in our users. Because what I've noticed, is if if people treat it as a chore and they have to produce every day, then the quality drops. Right. It's right. only when when right. when you re return occasionally when you have something to discuss. Right. And that doesn't happen every day. Sometimes it doesn't happen like every week. But I think what I'm trying to say is we need more power users, but less frequent power users, perhaps. Yeah, that makes sense to me. As long as you keep it flexible. So if I was required to discuss mm -hmm. something every day or and if not, I wouldn't get the uh, uh, the tokens um then i wouldn't go in and post because like every day that's that's impossible but if it's flexible if i can go in whenever i have time then it's it's great i guess another question i have for you now on this is like do you feel like you're more adequately compensated or like rewarded for doing these behaviors for this program uh it's it's hard to determine since uh it doesn't really have a value yet but right uh just in terms of like reputation points uh i feel like 
yeah, I guess before I used to go on the leaderboard and I was like way down, even though I had spent a lot of time on the site. Uh, now I think it's more adequate to my, uh, my activity on the site. So we have Pat, do, does like supporting RSC go into the leaderboard calculation? You know, I have to look at it again because it, it may, so. yeah, I think it does. If what um, Nick, Nicholas was saying is right, you know, like he was spending basically the same amount of time on the site and doing the same amount of stuff, but now he's getting more recognized for it. So, yeah, that was a security concern from earlier from one of the users, right? Because people can infer how much, how many coins do you have right. based right. on the reputation. Right. Yeah, we should uh, look into the calculation for the leaderboard because I do think that's been mentioned to me like a couple of times of people being like, oh, like, I don't think I could potentially get to the top of this or, mm -hmm. or just even who's on it. So I'll bring that right. up and just like, yeah. Is the leaderboard even he healthy for the community, right? Because it, it it's discouraging for new users. They'll never catch up. I wonder if we should do like a leaderboard based because like, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I like, don't think about the leaderboard that much, but it seems like, like Nick, Nicholas, like when he was talking, when you were talking about, um, what made you feel good, like showing up on that page made you feel good. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, more than the leaderboard, like the position of my, uh, user in the leaderboard right. uh, it's more about like the points mm -hmm. so if i had spent uh months on on the site and still had like 100 points and i i would see others that would have thousands of points and and i hadn't see the, seen their user uh pop up in a while then uh i would i'd be like okay uh, am i doing anything wrong here um right. but it, yeah, so I, I don't look at the leaderboard that much, but um, yeah, it's, it's I guess it's a way that a user could see like how much they're contributing to the site. I remember uh, Kesuma was on there for a really long time and she hadn't contributed in like a couple months. So yeah, I think we should probably look into the leaderboard and do a little yeah. bit more thinking. I wonder if it should be something like this month's top users, you know? So it's not like, hey, if I contributed a ton of content, like maybe we can have it all time, but like maybe that's like one of the filters that are like least seen, yeah? And like it defaults to like, hey, this month, who are the top users this month? Or like yeah, the past three weeks or something, you know? Like the homepage one. Sure. Exactly, yeah, yeah, trending. More I like think trending. that would be better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, how, how do we feel about the content so far that's being shared in the power user program? Anton, do you feel like it's like discussion, like where, you know, more people are actively here or just generally, what are you feeling? Well, the users that the, the old users are already, you know, t tested by time. Uh, it, it's mostly, I would say this is probably the weak link in the power user program because it does require a certain amount of babysitting from the moderator. Even if the users are contributing quality content, right? If, if they are outside of your area of expertise, it's kind of hard to gauge whether it's decent content, right? Because like, like I'm, I'm grading right now, right? I'm, I'm teaching and my students do the same thing. They, they, they write in overly complex language but they write nonsense, right? So, and I like if I would be outside of this area, I would be like, "Oh, that sounds smart." So, for that, I probably down the line would need to be more segregated into hubs. But for now, I sometimes do have to be like, "No, I, I, I can't get into that. I can't moderate that." So, unfortunately, you know, you, you can't produce in in that line, I guess. 
Uh, I guess what you're saying is that like eventually we'll have to scale up the governance of it. So it's field specific. So it'd be like mm-hmm. biochemistry mods for the biochem hub to biochem power users, that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And also, well, there is, honestly, there there are some downfalls here in terms of infrastructure. Like, I mean, obviously for me as, as a mod, right, I don't have access to like lists of users. I can't follow or track a specific number of users. I can't select their contributions in the live feed. But also for the users themselves, right? So like, try it yourself. Go on the research hub and try to find 10 comments that you like. It, it's kind of, right now, it's impossible to search for comments, you know. Yeah, because I guess uh, we don't even have most commented or most discussed in the filter anymore. No. Um, Maybe there Anton is... Anton mm-hmm. brought this up. And uh, I was looking into like adding a couple of things to make it more easy yeah. to find stuff. Yeah, it may be something like like a, like a discovery. Like if you go to the home page, right, and you could select instead of posts, you could select comments. Yeah, discussions. Yeah, that, I was mm-hmm. looking at, into that how to build like a feed of comments. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. It, did you notice this is anecdotal as well, but just looking at some of the comments from the power user program, it seemed like people were commenting on papers that we'd had like a lot of discussion on in the past, like bringing up papers from like two or three months ago where there had been like a solid conversation and adding to it. That's pro- That probably means, honestly, I need to ask, but I, I am guessing this is how people find comments. They just go through the top upvoted papers of all time and they see if someone commented on it. I noticed someone uh, posted a a comment on a paper I had submitted like months back. I had even forgotten I I submitted that paper. So, uh, I mean, I've been doing the same thing, uh, digging through papers that I find interesting. Um, If there was a better way to search by topic, uh, like subtopic, that that would that would be uh, that would be great. This is something we mentioned before, Nick. Are you thinking like tags kind of? So if I like, instead of looking at COVID papers, I could look at like um, maybe like dexamethasone within COVID. Yeah, or even improving like the search function uh, like by by keywords. So uh, I find it really difficult to like find uh, a specific author or uh, or subtopic, yeah, like uh, even uh, by method would be would be a good one, uh, just for like statistics papers and geography and et cetera. If you search like regression, and someone need to someone would need to put tags on that, right? We've thought about tags a little bit, and I think some tags can be like even automatically assigned to papers just uh, from how we upload them. And I think some AIs can do that too. Yeah, we have some keywords available. Yeah. We've heard that feedback a lot um, and just haven't, it hasn't gotten onto the roadmap yet, but I do think that would be helpful to give a little bit like more resolution to searches. Cool. So I guess um, like moving forward in the power user program, Anton, do you feel comfortable with the current rewards? Like, are there any changes that you want to make? Not sure. Maybe. Well, I, I let, let's do it this way. So let's, if you guys have engineering resources to develop more discoverable comments, then I could maybe introduce more tasks that are specifically aimed at like more discussion or interaction between users. What I've got a thought, and this is something I've been thinking for a little bit. I just want to throw it out, see what people think about it. Like if let's say like, I mean, every day there's like, I don't know, a couple hundred papers published, right. Out of like all of the possible journals out there in the world, like maybe a couple thousand, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
do we think it's useful or like interesting to let's say i don't know in all the big journals let's cover all the big journals and every single paper that's published in a big journal every day like try to get some commentary on that you know like re like maybe it's harder but um instead of focusing on like all these random journals from random times or particles like maybe like what what do people think about I don't know like well, that that's yeah. well actually that's how that's how our most dedicated power users function they actually don't go for like they don't go for recent papers that were just published yesterday right because they have no opinion on that they have done no research right. on that what they do is right. actually they go through like papers they are working on maybe for their dissertation or something right and they are right, right. at the same at the same time as they're reading it for themselves they're contributing to the research hub and that right. is i think the yeah, most sustainable that's... way to do it right right yeah you might be right about that yeah yeah because it's not any different from what they're currently doing and they kind of just get mm -hmm. rewarded mm -hmm. for doing their own work yeah 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 yeah, yeah. This kind of reminds me of um, Olga's suggestion to uh, integrate Zotero too, because then it would be like, oh, I'm actually, you know, managing my citations for, you know, whatever purpose, my dissertation or whatever, and then make it super easy to go from there to adding that paper to Research Hub and getting feedback on it. Yeah, that that would be just in general to have like collections functionality on Research Hub, right? Just so papers that. Like you saved, you have a list that list you can, you know, have folders, subfolders based on categories or whatever. That would already be nice, right? Because people use that. People people need a list of things that they have read and they need readily available comments. Like they the comments that they posted on them and the comments other people posted on them, maybe for the discussion. That would be nice. Okay, cool. And just to, to uh, tie bow on the power user program portion, um, I guess we're, we're feeling pretty happy with the beginnings of it. And it's maybe not necessarily worth changing for the next two weeks just to give it more time to like grow and potentially gather data. And then maybe reassess in another two weeks whether it's worth putting some engineering efforts to making uh, comments more discoverable. Well, the comments I would... If if it's if it's not too demanding on you, I would I think the comments are actually like even independently from the power user program or discoverability of comments kind of feels like priority to me. Pat, do you think we'd be able that to sounds good, yeah. slip in anything? I think like? we'd get something quickly. Yeah, I definitely think so. Like even just like bringing back like if there are comments on a paper, we should show the comment count. Mm -hmm. um, and then like a comments feed. So searching is a little bit tougher, like pure search. Um, that all, but like bringing in a comments tab, you know, like discussions tab, so you can see like all the discussions. We try to do that with like the feed on the homepage, um, like the latest activity feed, but like that also has other stuff in it. So like, yeah, like maybe we just need a pure discussions tab there. And we can see how it is and then we can filter by like yeah like uh, most recent discussions top rated whatever so yeah okay cool um yeah so for the last 10 minutes i just wanted to like give a quick uh update on how our offsite went uh, we talked about a lot of stuff, and I can share uh, our notes in the community channel if you guys would like to see. But um, the two major things that I want to bounce off you guys just to kind of crystallize it a little bit more in our head is uh, the next major feature that we should be working on after the ALN, and then uh, potentially like how we're going to make money from Research Hub. So yeah, curious what everybody thinks here. Some of the most popular things, basically how this works is we just took our list of major features and just talked about it for about an hour and a half um, and tried to sort of prioritize what we thought made the most sense to pursue over the next like six to 12 months. Um, and then uh, Pat and Thomas, correct me, like if you guys uh, think differently, 
but it seemed like most of the discussion was around NFTs and then doing peer review as a service. So somehow figuring out a way to have open peer reviews where uh, like reviewers are actually incentivized with research coin to share their reviews. Maybe we have better reviews on those reviews themselves. And then we talked a lot about NFTs. Um, there's like a bajillion different ways that we could potentially implement these either from like allowing authors to mint their own NFTs for their papers and sell them or potentially having like NFTs represent um, someone's authorship share in a paper. So if you're like the first author, you can have 60% of an NFT for a paper, second author, like 25%, so on. Um, yeah, and then uh, the last thing that I think we talked about a lot was a fundraising feature to kind of think about the use case of this Quibit Lab. Um, someone using our ELN could publish content that was eventually used as a marketing tool in order to help them raise a funding. Um, this is kind of cool. A random person I was introduced to last week who's an early Ethereum investor was actually interested in like donating funding to the Quibit Lab. So we could potentially, without too much effort, help close the loop from like funder to scientist to then content creation. So yeah, curious um, of all the potential features we could build on Research Hub, which you guys think would be like the best for us to focus for the next like three months or so once we get the ELN out. I think if you're looking for for traction, the NFT idea uh, sounds like it would be good to to get implemented. Like, and it it goes. I'm not sure if you're thinking about it this way, but it, uh, what I had thought before is that uh, universities could could get in in a certain percentage, and uh, that would like incentivize the author to um, to do the work and, and publish uh, but also um, it would get give some sort of rep reputation so if the university owns uh, part of uh, part of the NFT um, and that has a certain value then uh, the author might might be more um, inclined to, to publish uh, that's my thinking as an outsider so you're thinking kind of along the lines of like the authorship credit where like Johns Hopkins would get like 20% of a minted NFT or, or is Johns Hopkins awarding the NFTs? Uh, it could be either or. Okay, cool. Does anybody else have any thoughts on uh, NFTs? Not, not sure. I mean, the scientists will need to be explained how it works. <laughs> so I, 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 my, my personal, like, I don't know, I, priority here, actually, I, I think the, all the features, all like necessary field features are already in here. I'm more like a Polishing guy. So like improve what we have kind of thing. Which I, I guess is not helpful for this conversation. Oh, so Anton, you're saying you think that we already have all the major features we need and it would be better to focus on improving what we currently have rather than focusing on adding something new? I think so. I like think about it, right? So right now you have a rather limited set of users. So all the features you currently have, all of them will be tested for weakness by like thousands of users once uh, you know research coin is evaluated. Do you want to introduce more potential weak links or do you want to try to like, yeah. like, like simulate, like, actually, I don't know. What is your design, uh, kind of like pipeline? How do you, do you simulate like what's going to, what, how it's going to work when we have thousands times more users or do you estimate, do you not think about it? The thought process so far has been kind of like divorced from the token and listing and value. I think the theory here has been like, if we can build a feature outside of the token that provides like basic utility required for product market fit, 
then the coin would be like kind of fuel on top of that. Um, you're totally right though, in that the feature set that we have currently with the coin infused could be like the feature that gives us product market fit. That's kind of what I think too. Um, so yeah, the thought process with these new major features is the stuff that we've done so far is kind of working, but we're still looking for like the killer value prop that then like helps research hub grow. But that might also be earning tokens for posting papers. And we won't really know that for sure until we're listed. Yeah, I made a big post choice in our signal chat, but like, I think with this, like we have to be a little bit careful because if you look at, um, what is it? Oh man, I forgot the name of that site. Um, what is that like Reddit where they can get paid? Oh, Steam Which it. Site was that again? Steam it, yeah, yeah, Steam it. It's like, it's, they basically have that kind of functionality with a coin you can get rewarded, you know? And they have like a pretty decent ecosystem, but they kind of like, it's still very niche and it's like way worse than Reddit, I would say. So, so it's worse. like, we have to, we have to be careful that we think that like just having a coin and having that ecosystem of rewards will be the thing that kicks it over the edge. You know, like, I think that like for the regular person, they don't even understand what crypto is. And like, you have to think too, like for most scientists, I, I would say a lot of scientists are very, uh, um not like negative but like very uh like what's the word for it time. yeah and like they have, might have a thought of like is this too good to be true you know and like is is this a scam like can i really get paid for just like sharing research sharing science you know and like especially because it's such a big departure from before right that like you'll have, we'll have a lot of pushback on that side. So I think like marrying this, the coin and reward system with tangible value is something that we, it'll be like a work in progress for us for as long as I think we exist, but it's something that we have to, I feel like get going. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's true. But there, but there is a feature creep, right? So like the, the onboarding right now does not there is, the, the old, people still have a lot of questions even after the after the onboarding, right? And if you keep introducing more features, at some point the onboarding will have to be like a two-hour-long lecture. People oh yeah, will... I totally agree. I don't like. It may not be that we need to add a bunch of features, you know, and it may be like we do need to polish what we currently have. Mm -hmm. But, um, and this is something that I wrote in the chat is like. I think we as a team and community should land on something of like where, uh, like what's the fundamental like value prop that we want to bring to the science world, you know? Like what is that thing? And then from there we can go make it as good as possible, you know? Then we can make the app as good as possible to fit that thing. So why do you think you don't have it yet? You, that that I, For me, it's already like a complete product. You you You... Plot cool science, you discuss it with other scientists and everyone's happy, you get paid for it. Why is that not a value proposition for you? That might be, that might, uh, I'm not saying it's not, that might be the one, you know? Um, oh, so you just want like, to, like, oh, you want to like, put, you know, put we need all, to, we need to lock it down because like a lot of those kind of features in the doc Joy shared, maybe they don't fit that kind of value prop and vision, you know? So it's like, once we, Hey, this is the exact thing we're doing, then we can like go like get around that whole mission you know so yeah like i yeah excuse me for interrupting but like i've been kind of on the low side of activity on research lately because i've been really busy but like on the other hand if i want to invite people over to the platform is i can't give them really a consistent explanation on why they should join research uh hub over research gate for instance because in fact, it's just the same, uh, uh, except for the uh, research coin now. But the research coin doesn't hold any value. And people, like we already discussed, like they don't see any added value in like registering for Research Hub, like at least in my in 
the people I know. So, like, I, I find it really, um, like, one of the highest priorities now is, like, to get on board, like, get out a message that's uniform, that, like, if you want to invite friends, you want to invite colleagues, like, this is what research ha stands for. And not like, yeah. yeah, we do this kind of stuff and this. Right. So what kind of stuff would be, like, if, if it's not good enough right now without Research Coin, what are the chances that you guys are going to, like, miraculously in, in two months or in however long, we'll, we'll discover a feature that has not been done yet. And everyone's going to love it for that and not... I don't necessarily think it's about not being done, but I think, Joyce, like, our kind of, like, our job probably over the next couple of weeks is really a lockdown of like, hey, why should I be here? You know, we have to give people a reason to be here, right? And like part of that reason could be, yeah, like you can earn tokens and earn cash. But I think for a lot of people, like maybe it's not compelling enough, especially in the beginning. Like it'll take, I don't know. It, it almost feels like we need to give them something. It, and it may not be a feature, you know, it's just like, Hey, like this is the vibe of our community and like you're here because of xyz you know like either we are gathering all the smartest people in the world on the site and if you're not here then like either you're going to get left behind or like you're not smart right we need to give people some kind of like thing like this i, I feel like of like why should i be here yeah that makes a, lot of a sense. very simple message of like you're here for this reason so but that's created by the community not the feature set so Agreed. What, yeah, it may not be a feature set. Yeah, yeah. What would be the messaging that would work to convince your friends? Like, what would be something where you could say to them, you know, here, come to Research Hub, and they would be like, oh yeah, that makes sense because ResearchGate doesn't have that, or you know, like what what would be that thing to you that would be most convincing? Maybe like with all the features we're bringing out with the ELN and like. The other features you're talking about right now, like is centralizing your research, like earning money, but on the other hand, like having everything on one app, one site, one like um, if you've got some requests or like you've been dealing with some issues, like get in touch with some people from Research Hub and maybe we can build like a solution to this and maybe yeah if, because we want to like i don't know it's 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 kind of mm -hmm. difficult it is difficult right and i think the the narrative it doesn't help like if you introduce more features the explanation becomes less succinct mm -hmm. right it's it's not like you can't invite people be like oh yeah we have comments oh by the way also we have the eln oh by the way also we have the hypothesis yeah. graph it's not it's not a part of the same right. coherent story <laughs> the, the coherent story is you can do like, like you can interact with other scientists and non-scientists on this platform in a comfortable way. And that's what I'm hinting at. Like, I, I think a lot of the things could use a revision, like the hub system, the list system, you know, like stuff like that. Agree. Agree. And I think that Agree. should take priority over introducing like NFTs because like, do scientists use NFTs? I don't know. I don't think so. so why would people then make an account on research hub and not already on a very well established research gate because like most of the people are just like ah oh, there's already a lot of users like a big user base mm -hmm. on research gate why should i list on r8 i don't think i don't think we should that the re the research coin right it's just eventually i don't think we should just try to get around not having a research coin it's impossible right so the, imp the research coin is a big uh, part of the system here and well, we just just assume that once it hits the market, then what will people do? I mean, um, I think the thing that we have to think about too is like when I'm on ResearchGate, the quality of content there is very low. Meaning, like a lot of the uh, like some uh, authors will post their stuff, you know, but they won't really interact with people. And like a lot of the content there that's being discussed is like very low brow, and it's I actually see like. It's a lot of people from like third world countries trying to like get some information about something, you know? And so like, I, I've seen this before with the, uh, like before there used to be Yahoo Answers. I, it might still be around, I don't know. But then Quora came around and they made a really like good community there where a lot of the content was very high quality. 
you know, and people wanted to be there because of that. I don't think we should discount that kind of thing. Like if we say we're striving to bring like the smartest people together to have like the best discussions about science on the internet, like that's a, that's a statement and that's something that people can grasp onto and be like, oh yes, like I want to be here, you know, like I want to create this kind of community. I want to be a part of it. And so if we're going like down community side of like, Hey, we're trying to build the best science community on the internet. Like these are some of the things that we have to like bring out and like try to sell people that, Hey, we're going to create the best science community around, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think if you, if you, if you decide that this is going to be your strong suit, then you go, you go full in into that not new feature but in that like make right exactly make yeah. make, make the verified academic users more notable right. like give them give right. them a nickname of a different color do something else like make right. their comments more discoverable create like a, a video that people can share that you know explains what research hub is about just general agree, polish and invitation of people agree agree yeah and that that makes a lot of sense just the the phrase that you just said pat where it's like um like a super high quality community and like like it's the best place to talk about science on the internet like i do think that's doable because even looking at ResearchGate, i just checked out the like their biology hub and in total they have like just under a thousand questions throughout like the lifetime of this existing so to me that's not like a ton of discussion going on no it's not it's not mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah I, I think you're right that like even sans coin and financial value having like a, a community of experts talking about cool shit is you know that that invitation then makes sense like join this community of experts talking about cool shit and then the fire on that could be the coin yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. okay cool so that yeah. creates a problem right so for, if our value proposition is we have cool community but now we are in a situation where we don't have a cool community. We have nothing to offer. Well, we, that's, I think we start, well, I don't, I wouldn't say we don't have necessarily a cool, cool community yet. I would, like, I think all communities, they start kind of small, you know? And like, I think we do have like, I mean, like Ari joins our community calls. He sometimes posts on the website, you know, he's got like this VC fund. Maybe he's not like the top, top guy in science, but like, we start to bring some people like this, like Clarice, she's got a lab at UCLA. If we can start to get these people in on board and doing some stuff, you know, like eventually more people will come. So it, it's not an easy job. It's, I think it's very hard, but it's definitely a path we can go down and get into, you know? For sure. I think it can be, it can be expedited as well. Right. So right. even if there is no, like people like interacting with each other, right? So I, I talk right. to other uh, scientists like, would you like to leave a comment there? And like, sure. Do you think someone will respond and we'll talk about yeah, that's what the they're biggest posted? thing. Yeah. And I'm like, chances are no, but, but we might be maybe, able to solve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so just discoverability, right? So maybe I, yeah, yeah. I, it would be nice to have like every time you refresh a page, it would be like a, a, a selection of like, trend in common that you might like or something right and every time you refresh the page it's going to be a different selection not necessarily from today right so just all the efforts toward discoverability and then we can produce content that people will exchange with each other as opposed to it being kind of like stranded undiscoverable at the right. moment it, it reminds me what you just described Anton, a little bit of TikTok, where part of how TikTok got so big was that they basically guarantee engagement when people do new videos. So if you're like a new user and you post your first video, it's like you're guaranteed to get engagement just based on how their algorithm works. And so, yeah, it's a huge problem if people come to Research Hub and it's like, oh, let me post a comment and most likely I won't even get a response. Like we should have some kind of discoverability thing where if you do your first comment on research hub you're going to get put in front of every smart person so like it's almost impossible for you to not get a comment on your thing like we can you know help like hook people with engagement at the beginning of their research hub uh like usership i guess yeah uh, yeah we need the uh, content suggestion efforts right so something like like youtube i think i remember patrick you said that you 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 know 
you're a big fan of how YouTube has their algorithm that's so ineffective at captivating your attention. The same here, like we have limited information for, about the users, but try offering them stuff. N not that just not just the latest stuff, not just the most upvoted stuff, but different stuff and see what grabs their attention. I don't know if you have a dedicated specialist for that on your team. Totally. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, let, we, we should talk about this more, Joyce, like over next. I feel like if we land something like a, co like a, not coherent, but like a very compelling mission statement, then we can figure out ways to build towards that, you know, so. Yeah, totally. We can, at tomorrow, I think we can talk a little bit more. Yeah, and like one last thing, I think that like the, I think the most giant feature that should really, yeah, like get launched sometime like is an app because like nowadays I don't use my phone to like, when I go to Chrome, it's just to look up something. Like someone said something, ah, like uh, there's a nice restaurant and I, ah, yeah, okay, where is it? I look it up on Chrome or if I want to read the paper in detail, I go on Chrome. But for the rest, I just use apps, apps, apps. I get like, notifications and like on research up now with the hashtags that would be really nice like if people just let add a few hashtags and you can follow these hashtags or like i mean that's way easier than like going back to the site it reminds me of like the days i was on with my uh, hobby as a on a forum like really going to the site is is kind of outdated in my opinion yeah, no, it totally is. You're absolutely right. That was another thing that we talked about was building a mobile app sometime within the next six months. And apparently um, the language that we've used for Research Hub is super easy to turn into a mobile app. So yeah, That's it's I, I would give it like like an 80% chance that we'll have a mobile app sometimes within the next six months mm -hmm. just to make it super easy to like browse and get notifications, all that. Yeah. Cool. So I think that pretty much does it for the um, topics for this week. Thank you guys so much for your time and the ideas. I, I think you're right though, where like, uh, I think like our leadership's perspective is comes from a place of like product led growth where like, Hey, you build a feature, either the feature causes like a bunch of people to share mm -hmm. with all their friends and everybody uses it or it doesn't. And if it doesn't new feature, next one up, you know, <laughs> just keep going until you find the one that does do it. But um, yeah, a lot of Web3 stuff can be more like community oriented in its growth. Like there can be coins that like, you know, are worth more than a billion dollars and they don't even have a website, you know, with zero features. So yeah, I think, I think striking a better balance between like product led growth and community led um, is probably the right recipe, but we'll, yeah. we'll about it. You, you, you guys have a finite team, right? So you can't keep pumping out features because they'll need support maintenance from you right and you'll be spread thin yeah in theory part of our job too is to like parse through the product and remove stuff that isn't getting used so right. like maybe like the post feature or something you know we could like take that back or yeah but but you're right it is it's just hard because we need to get the coin listed because once it's listed it'll have a value and then will people contribute content for a beer at the end of the day you know what i mean that question can be tested, but it's hard yeah. to really know where we're at without having that question be able to be tested. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the reason I'm the reason I'm actually a big fan of last features is because I think like once the you know the coin is listed, it will attract a lot of people and a specific type of people, a specific type of people who like to exploit systems, <laughs> right? And yeah. you need to be prepared. And the less uh, weak links you have, the less likely you are to be blown up like a Death Star. <laughs> totally, yeah. This is definitely some Death Star potential. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and we might be able to cut it down back before we're, we're listed, but yeah, the point makes a ton of sense. Cool. Does anybody else have anything until next week? Um, don't think so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again for the time, guys. See you all later. Yeah. Bye, everyone. See you, everyone.